So yeah, this is um, going to be a video. You can see from the title, it's kind of just a, an overview of part two. There is a part one which had my more my more kind of favourites in. Um, I did wonder about blending them, but it's, it would be too long. So yeah, and then the introduction this time is going to be more of a like a little interview with um, Tanya. Just gonna have to take my words that that I really asked these questions. And, and she answered them because um, obviously we didn't you know it's not recorded or anything like that and um, also she's as uncomfortable on, on camera as me as me and so, so but whatever I just thought this time I'll put a bit more about the brand and and Tanya's vision and where it comes from and and all of that stuff so yeah it's not it's not gonna be um, the greatest video ever but hopefully more of an overview a little bit more detail and stuff um, because it is one of my favorite brands etc um, and, and that's basically it also I'll timestamp everything I, I, I if you watch any bit of this watch the introduction bit this is not the introduction just to kind of find out you know about the brand etc all right folks right we'll crack on to this so my story with April Aromatics began uh, many years ago, let, let's say. Um, obviously I'd heard uh, the great Marcus, Marcus Ibrahim, talking about the brand and um, yeah, it, it fascinated me. I'd never really smelt um, natural perfumery or, or anything like that up until that point. And um, I think I, I may have won one of Marcus's giveaways or was it... Uh, I can't remember. It might have actually been... No, that doesn't matter. I won a giveaway anyway, and I won the Discovery set, which was much smaller back then than it is now. And um, it was it was an unusual experience at first, because, again, never smelled anything like that. There's a few that really stood out to me. Um, obviously, we know Nectar in Love is a big favourite of mine. Um, Purple Rain. Um, and then, obviously, l later on, as I discovered more and more from the brand, um, Lotus Rising is just, if not my favourite fragrance ever, one of them. It's it's just utterly breathtaking, an amazing fragrance. Anyway, um, I mean, I need to point out that having a, a friendship with Tanya that's kind of developed kind of doesn't, you know, you know me, doesn't influence what I say about them. I've, I've said there's a few that just weren't for me, but you can appreciate the beauty of them. So, yeah, that that kind of developed just over time, just chatting, not necessarily about perfume and, and stuff. Um, we watched the Eurovision t together when that was on, for example. Just because it's, it's just nice to have a, a little bit of a chat and stuff, and it's it's not. It, there's some people who have brands and stuff who aren't like completely business focused all the time, and that. So that so that's nice. Anyway, um, I kind of I need to do a proper interview with Tanya sometimes, and I won't do like a like a German accent to to her answers for this. But one of the things that I asked her was, um, when did you first kind of dream of your own perfume brand? I mean. That I've seen interviews with her, but, but again, they're in German. So it, it, she she basically says she never really dreamt of being a perfumer. Um, she developed her sense of smell um, when she was um, baking with a, a dad and, and a mum's perfume, um, which was a Chimard from Guerlain. I've never smelled that. And she got her first perfume when she was 16, which was from from a close friend and that was Lair du Temps from Nina Ritchie um, and that yeah I guess, I guess that really does kind of suit um, Tanya a lot and then she uh, travelled a lot with work I believe um, Tanya was a model for a bit and she kind of came across the healing benefits of essential oils and then obviously it, it developed on from there and she met people from India and Turkey and she witnessed the distillation of um, little products and natural perfumes and so she started making them in a, in a little flat in um, New York then some of her friends were kind of interested in uh, some of them and so it developed from there 
So eventually she developed that into a small business. And then um, did, she decided to move back to um, Germany with her husband, who kind of, you know, suggested he give it a proper go in that. So he designed the logo and obviously was, was a great help, I imagine, and a great influence and, and kind of nice push towards it. And um, yeah, April Aromatics was born then. So then obviously I asked her, was there any of these fragrances that she'd made for her friends that developed into full perfumes that, you know, that we're familiar nowadays? And yeah, there was a, a couple, uh, apparently, like Pinkwood and Calling All Angels um, was was created then, which is is one that Tanya is most well known for. It is an, it is an absolutely brilliant um, fragrance. And uh, that was kind of the idea of an incense perfume. Um, and she didn't like it apparently in the end but obviously that was an award winning one and a ray of light was inspired by a friend as well apparently who wanted something citrusy and tobacco-y that was inspired by Cuba so yeah and then obviously I asked her what were the first fragrances when was it born and she had initially eight fragrances um, but she did start with a uh, oil based roll on ones and then she went public into the European market and she developed them into a more kind of traditional eau de parfum thing. And the first eight were Precious Woods, Bohemian Spice, Culling All Angels, Rose Lange, Rose and Lust, Liquid Dreams, Uta den Linden and Yasmina. Now Uta den Linden, I can't find my sample of that. So that will be missing from this video sadly. And um, yeah, so that's kind of the beginning of uh, Tanya's kind of journey and that. Hopefully one. So yeah, it's obviously been fun to, to go back over them all again and they're in no particular order. I'm going to start with Pink Wood. Now this one is a kind of, it, it begins like a, a lovely sweet, slightly sharp rose. And as it develops, there's a kind of sumptuous, juicy, fruity feeling under it. It's It's got a magnificent texture and depth. It's just like this kind of, rose with these kind of almost mouth wateringly kind of underneath and it's kind of from then on it's a dance between the sharper geranium and a kind of voluptuous rose and then slowly you get like a lovely touch of um, oud and woodiness in the base and it turns into a kind of beautiful sweet fruity smooth rose and there's a kind of silky resinous base it's just it's um it's delightful it's obviously a rose oud but it's it's not like like you know everyone says they all smell the smells that's nonsense but this one with that fruity aspect in it makes it kind of super friendly and it, yeah i'd say it's kind of you could wear this on a night out or for a, a kind of meeting or seeing your friends and the fact that it's got that kind of um, fruity juiciness, the mouth wateringliness with the traditional rose oud makes it, yeah, makes it more fun and, and an easier wear. So that's pink wood. Next is um, Ray of Light. Um, this one was, has always been a bit of a tricky one for me, to be honest. It opens with a kind of beautiful sticky citrus which is absolutely gorgeous with like lemon, lime, bergamot if you like and a beautiful fresh mint. The mint really lifts it and freshens it up mixing with them citruses and it to me it's more of a kind of spearmint. You kind of get the difference don't you? Kind of yeah it's 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 lovely and then the the kind of vetiver it's, it's more of a kind of woody vetiver and soft tobacco come through with a gentle musk. The citrus kind of moves back, but it stays, it's much mellower. And then it's kind of the vetiver and the tobacco for me. Um, and it dries down like a, a beautiful kind of lemony, soft, almost powdery, woody musky fragrance. And again, this, this is sometimes, I suppose sometimes you've got to be in the mood for a fragrance. I love the opening. And then the kind of mids is where, where I struggle. I'm growing to love vetiver, aren't I? And, and that more. But 
that kind of I don't know sometimes obviously like I say it's, it's lovely and this again I think was award winning nominated so what do I know um, and then yeah the bases is absolutely sorry the dry down is absolutely lovely that kind of powdery musky woody lemon is, is quite sumptuous and again the name does give a lot of weight it is like a a big ray of light um the damn bird <laughs> it's it's quite enjoyable i'd say this is a one that would appeal to most people it's fairly easy going it's very fresh it's like as usual it's very natural smelling of these citruses and that so that's ray of light so next we have one that i must have kind of forgotten about and i don't i don't really know why um it just mustn't have at the time really vibed with me but a lot of these I've kind of gone a whole 360 with and, and fallen in love with it and this one's Erdiston or I think that's how you say it and this one opens with a, a lovely cocoa and tobacco with a with a gorgeous woody vetiver that's what I mean sometimes I do really like vetiver and it, it, it kind of gives you the feeling of it's like smoking a pipe sitting below uh, like a, a tree like an autumnal tree though you can see the oranges and browns and and all of that and the the rich the tobacco is quite rich and there's a smooth resinousness underneath it all and then you get this like i call it like a woody musk and fallen orange and brown leaves maybe that's a bit of the veteran and patchouli in there and it becomes beautifully woody with the tobacco and the beautiful almost honeyed woods and musk enveloping it all now this is um i suppose it's a little bit of nostalgia because again you, you think of your like your grandfather's wooden um tobacco box that's the word and his pipe and it's got that kind of that smell of the woods that have had tobacco in them and then you get the kind of the outdoorsy kind of woody almost bare trees now and it's weird the, the tobacco the cocoa isn't strong but it just peppers this little bit of loveliness to it and then the muskiness is quite quite enveloping around it all and again it's another it's just beautifully calm and relaxing and and, and nostalgic for, for good times of being a kid and that I suppose but it's also I think it means morning star or evening star or something star anyway <laughs> earth star that's it and yeah it, it is kind of like this moment in time frozen where everything's beautiful and everything's still and everything feels as good as it did then it's just a it's a lovely fragrance so that's Erdiston so next is um, Irresistible or Irresistible it's Irresistible isn't it um, and this one opens with a very very clay like earthy um, mushroomy potato-y kind of um, oris um, with, with some citrus and as slowly as this one develops there's a kind of um, lovely sweetness that starts to bloom nothing really stands out just some kind of sweet petals from from the florals in there the clay stays there kind of damp and cool and it becomes more powdery with the clay and maybe you get kind of a a more carrot seed kind of orisey kind of feel to it all and then um it starts to sweet up and uh, there's brushes of some slight woodiness and uh, more of a kind of an irisy touch to it. Now this one obviously for obvious reasons not being a, someone who, who really kind of is, is all that into oris I can find it a bit too much and a bit too clay like for me but this is this is um, showing it in kind of all its most natural glory and and if you've smelt kind of more purely oris ones you kind of know what I'm talking about it's just um, clay like but you do get the recognizable iris touch to it the iris kiss from it and it becomes um, yeah really quite um, 
pleasant in the end and, and a little bit musky but um, if you're one of them Oris lovers and it's kind of pure kind of um, raw form you are going to love this one and again it's I'd never smelt Oris at this point as a, as a more kind of natural thing and you don't really understand what, what exactly it's like till you sniff this one but sadly with this one I think it's been discontinued once it's all sold out because obviously Oris is a very expensive ingredient and Tanya kind of being about the art and the, the beauty and the love of perfumery and that is not going to reformulate it because then it just wouldn't be the same fragrance so I believe anyway so that's a bit of a sad story but if you are an Oris iris lover this one I, I couldn't recommend any more to try and, and if you love it pick up a bottle quick again I'm not a salesperson this is not a sponsored video or anything like that this is this is my love of them but yeah I think if you're an Oris lover you've got to try this one so that's Iris Irresistible next is that one that I struggle to pronounce and I've had a, a very good French friend to help me and other people I think it's Vetiver Coeur um, possibly <laughs> let's just call it that um, and this one yeah I've, I've spoken about it recently this one is one I tried and didn't write off but it wasn't a love and then obviously tastes have developed times past and now I kind of um, I kind of think I really love this one so it opens with a strong lime and lemon kind of the rindiness the zestiness from it and there's there's a dark smoky vetiver under it and as this one develops there's a kind of smooth oris and a slight spiciness that comes out in there as well but it's still it's still obviously all about the vetiver and um, citrus and it dries down to a, like a gorgeous musky and an almost leathery vetiver to me now as we know citrus and um, vetiver seem to be one of these again that's that kind of perfect marriage but this is this is taking it to the next level the citrus is so vivid and so real mixing with that kind of lovely dry sometimes little on the earthy side of a vetiver it's just it's magical again it's not one that you'd ever associate with me but I've just kind of I love it it's really classy really easy and a kind of nice summery one so that is vetiver so this one opens with a kind of warm orange and a fresh orange with a sort of darker orange as well and it, it starts to be kind of freshened up and a bit of sunshine and sweetness coming from the ylang ylang and it's kind of grounded nicely with a warm patchouli the spices come through um, with an earthy dryness and then the, the patchouli gets more dry and, and kind of you know what I mean like that smell of the, of a warm earth kind of smell and it, the it's um the sweeter lavender keeps a little bit fresh a little bit vibrant and i think there's a little lilac in there with the resins giving it a, a more of a kind of again a, a springy sweetness so this one is kind of um i mean I, I presume it's it's obviously meant to be spicy and a kind of hippie shop one if you like and yes you get that obviously the patchouli gives it that kind of feel and then them aromatic kind of witchy incense kind of feel to it you know you know what i mean like dried herbs and, and all of that that you kind of get in there and it's it's really again another the calming and relaxing one it's it's just yeah it's quite peaceful and quite quite good probably just for like a chill day when you're chilling out or you know if you're off for a walk or to a, a festival or something like that a great fragrance so that's bohemian spice next is one that i have had to wear a few more times than the others because when i first tried this one i really disliked it really really didn't get on with it at all um not, not because of um any any reason it wasn't a bad fragrance 
but it was very sharp on me and we know what I'm like, I'm a bit of a, a fuss pot with the sharpness. Anyway, this is Rose Lange and this opens, this, more recently my experience with it is it opens with a smooth orange and a, a kind of a lovely warm orange blossom and there is a touch of rose in the background and there is a sharper feel from the neroli um, and the, the sweetness of the ylang ylang again adds the brightness and kind of tames that sharpness now obviously when I first tried this it was it was the neroli that's that's the sticking patch for me isn't it because it was just too too sharp and too kind of greenly bitter for some reason now I don't notice that as much maybe because I am slowly slowly warming to neroli I'm noticing it less that's of course possible but yeah um, the, the neroli does get a bit sharper and the orange blossom kind of warmly envelops it all so it gives it it kind of neutralizes it and, and takes it away and the, uh, the gorgeous kind of sweet rose lasts long into the dry down. Now the rose sweetens up and then there's a beautiful muskiness about it. And I think that's what, what, where I've changed. It's, it's the love of rose more and the orange blossom taken over from the neroli. So that's rose l'orange. Next is a precious woods. And this is obviously, as you can imagine, a woody one. So it opens with a some big lovely woods um, the pine and the cedar jump out the most at first so a kind of uh, fresh you know just unshaved woody kind of feel the vetiver adds a kind of little sweetness in there I think as well with perhaps a touch of citrus not overly sure where where the sweetness comes from at this point um, it starts to get a little kind of um, you know um, grainier with with all the textures and a, a little creamier as well I'd say so maybe the cedar or maybe there's a touch of a kind of sandalwoody feel in there um, and it, it it's nice it's like a, all different just chopped woods and, and trees all together and then there's, they kind of merge with a kind of patchouli which again gives it that like earthy kind of feel of either you know the woods kind of um, drying out in the sun or the kind of the still the trees that are still there and it, it case it does kind of stay quite similar right through it this one um, and it, it just seems to maybe get more more woody and then obviously the dry down it's the vetiver and the cedar that kind of have it and again that like freshly chopped cedar like a little bit a little bit match sticky maybe which which I absolutely adore so as you can tell I'm, I'm not generally a woody lover but actually again because this just smells like all these woods it, it literally does it's like being by a sawmill or something like that a bit of dustiness in the air the kind of the dry woods everywhere the, the, the trees and it's it's just a beautiful fragrance and again if you're a wood fan and you want to smell the kind of most natural, very different woods all together, this, this will be a good one to try. So that is um, Precious Woods. Next one we have is Ag Agatha. Well, I always want to say Agatha, but it's, it's not Agatha. Agatha, who I believe is a Germanic goddess, um, or Old Norse kind of Germanic goddess. Anyway, this one opens up with some absolutely gorgeous mimosa and fruits. It's, it's, oh, it's beautiful in the opening. And it, and it has a little kind of banana-y feel in the background. I'm not sure where that's coming from, whether it's kind of um, maybe a bit of tuberose or jasmine giving it this kind of a sweetness. The honey comes through then and it adds a kind of beautiful smooth touch to it. Um, with with the dry hay underneath, or which is again is is quite lovely. Um, the the honey is just a kind of smoothness. You can smell it, but again, it's quite subtle and, and quite smooth. Now I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure this is is a honey accord. It's it's vegan. I don't, don't quote me on that. But yeah, the, the honey just adds the the smoothness. 
The hay then kind of adds something a little bit naughty in the background. There's a little bit like it's a stable hay. Now that could come from the honey, but I think it's I think it's the hay. It's damp hay, let's just say. And it becomes after that like a, a lovely musky hay with with a dry woodiness. Um, and the, you know, like the hay has been drying out in the sun, and it's it's got this beautiful kind of dryness in there. The honey kind of lingers, the musks linger around it. It's just a really kind of peaceful, beautiful um, scene it creates. You know, like the, the, the hay's been rolled in the fields and you can still smell little bits of the grass and some kind of sweeter floral twinkles with a little bit of maybe fruity citrus there. It's a really nice one. So that's Agatha. Well, Agatha, it's not Agatha, is it? I just want to call it that. Then we have Lost in Roses, which is a is a 50-50 love or like. Again, depends on the day and, and the weather as well and that. So sometimes it, it opens up with like a, a sort of tea-like English rose. You know, it's a little sharp. It's kind of surrounded by this, I don't know how to describe it like like i suppose it's called a tea rose because it has a little bit of a kind of black tea feel around it i don't, that, that's not a listed rose by the way but that's what i get and it mixes with with the grapefruit which gives it a kind of bright but again a little bit sharp kind of citrusy fruitiness about it there's also some some nicer fruits in there and as again it develops as a fragrance you kind of notice mainly to me a kind of raspberry a kind of tart raspberry and sometimes there's a kind of purpley powderiness um, could it be a, a violet in there and then again it develops and develops and you get more of the powdery rose in there maybe still with a sprinkle of that purple powderiness and it, it, get, it gets sweeter the roses get fuller and um, yeah, it's quite, and it dries down beautifully musky in that. Sometimes for me though, but being honest with it, sometimes the kind of, that tea rose can dominate just a little bit too much. Um, but again, the, the dry down's the same, but it depends whether that lingers or not. But on a hot day, it tends to be much mellower and much more musky and lovely on a cooler day. Yeah. But the, the dry, the muskiness and the powderiness in the dry down with, with the roses is just, mm, it's lovely. So that's Lost in Roses and it, it is, I mean the name says it all, it's just all these roses together, beautifully done and beautifully natural. And um, I've never smelt a real Bulgarian rose or anything but I, you know you get a feeling from what it's like in fragrances and that's there and there's, there's another rose in there. Maybe Turkish rose, I can't remember off the top of my head. And and then that, that English rose, and it, it's just like a rose garden. It's lovely. So that's uh, Lost in Roses. The next is, um, is a fairly simplistic one, so I won't waffle on loads about it. And it could be one of my favourites. It's just magnificent. And that's Wild Summer Crush. Now it opens with a, with a, with a juicy red grapefruit and a kind of oranginess. And it's almost like... You, you've just opened it up and it's it's you know it's warm in the atmosphere and that and you can just smell this beautiful juicy grapefruit juice which kind of lingers on all the way to the end with a bit of oranginess and then there's this kind of a warmth underneath I don't know maybe a bit better maybe something a little bit resinous again I'm not looking at the notes for this it's just what I get and there's a slight muskiness but it just stays throughout as this kind of juicy lovely dark grapefruit maybe with like a packet of fruit gums like you've just opened the bag and you've sniffed it as well under it all it's just very fresh very sweet it's not too bright or sharp it's got a nice body to it it's warm it's lovely it's just a perfect summer days fragrance so that's uh, wild summer days, uh, wild summer crush.
So yeah, the video was filmed in many different places. As you can tell, some of it was voiced over. So the sound quality is probably absolutely terrible. Obviously the wind is, uh, is gone now. Anyway, April Aromatics is a massive house. I will link part one somewhere if I remember and I know how to do it because that's got the rest of the fragrances. Um, like I say, Unter den Linden isn't there, under the linden tree probably. Um, I'm not, I wasn't gonna make it up. Because if you can't smell it, it's hard to describe something. I do remember it. It's quite limey and green and, and sharp and fresh. It's 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 a pleasant fragrance. I don't, I don't think it was a love for me back when I tried. The sample will be somewhere. Um, it's weird how it's not there, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it wasn't a great love for me. But it, it was it was a very good linden blossom um, fragrance, if you like. It was exactly how linden blossom kind of smells with the greenness and that anyway um i don't really need to waffle on but you could probably see that's a damn noisy bird you could probably see why i love this house so much and why it's just grown on me my first introduction to the more natural fragrances and and i can't deny it's, it's the best i've smelled so far anyway um as you can see, quite honestly and openly, I don't love them all. They're not all massive loves, um, but some of them have grown on me over time. Maybe maybe that's going to happen with the ones that I'm not madly in love with at the moment, but we're not going to love everything. The point of a house is, I mean, such a diverse collection that if, if I loved them all, that would be weird, wouldn't it, really? That would be more bizarre. It's like the Rose L'Orange been such a I don't know why I just love it now and it, before it's too sharp the lost in roses one which was a kind of massive love that's sometimes a love again it's 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 the times of year and it's the moments when we try these things and yes we do give them obviously we give them a few wears but chances are when you're giving them a few wears it's the same environment the same temperature the same kind of time of year and that sort of thing so yeah obviously try things all through the years that's a good lesson for that anyway i'm waffling on and on and on um that's the end of the video um thanks for watching like i say i'll try to chapter it i was going to put it as a premiere i don't know if i will or won't because i don't know i know people dip into these sort of videos with the fragrances that they're interested in rather than watching the overview we'll see Anyway, um, thanks for watching folks. What's your favourite from uh, April Aromatics? Do you have a favourite more natural house brand that, that you love? Um, again, we're not, well, I'm not even going to bring this discussion into it, whether you prefer natural or synthetic, because obviously these fragrances aren't 100% natural. They can't possibly be. And, and nothing is. As we know, a lot of a lot of completely natural stuff would burn our skin off etc so yeah there's there's no competition both both are needed but these are very natural leaning and a high percentage of naturals and i believe tanya makes them as natural as she possibly can which is why the, the price is a bit up and it's just a different experience there's no right or wrong is it anyway i'm waffling on and on and on again all right folks thanks for watching and bye